Welcome back to the third inning titled Friends and Hobbies, Family and In-Laws. A person said one time that a really good friend is someone who won't let you do something stupid alone. Did you get that part? Alone. If you're going to do something stupid, I need to be there with you. Do you have any friends like that? They're like, hey man, I'm signing up for the stupid stuff. I know I do, and maybe I've been the friend to someone who said, hey, I'll join you if it's stupid. But have you ever thought about your friends? Have you ever thought about how your friends affect your marriage? Have you ever put those two topics in the same category? Well, we're going to in this session. I think that who you pick as your friends has everything to do with the outcome of your life. I want you to imagine back in your life every time you've gone through a valley or a dark time or a difficult time, whether you were married or not, I want you to go back and think about your pattern. Who did you turn to? Who were they? What person did you turn to? Or maybe you turned to two or three people. Who are they? I want you to think for a second that we all have what I call first tier friends and second tier. The first tier are the top friends in our life. It's the go-to friend. And some people have one, some people have two or three or more. Some people don't have any. And I want to talk about your first tier. I want to talk about the people that you turn to whenever there's a trial or whenever you're having a bad day or something big is about to happen in your life. And I want to unpack this for you because this is such an important thing. If I've seen it once, I've seen it a hundred times where a couple comes in and they want divorced. I want divorced. And almost every single time, the person who really wants the divorce, who really wants out of their marriage, has already built up this posse in their personal life. A group of people, or at least one person, that's in their camp, encouraging them and helping them bail out on the marriage. I see it every time. And one of our objectives when we're helping couples is to figure out a way, how can I get between you and that friend to help you focus back on your marriage, back on the relationship, back on your children, back on what God wants to do in your family. And in many cases, we're unsuccessful. I can't get in between that person and their first tier friend. And that can be catastrophic. And so I want to talk to you about your first-tier friends. First, let's see what the Bible has to say. Proverbs 12, 26 says, The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. In other words, choose your friends carefully. Be careful. Be cautious. Secondly, it says in Proverbs 13, 20, it says to walk with the wise so that we become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. Be careful. Be strategic. You've got a first tier group of friends. You've got a second tier. The second tier are all the friends in your life that sort of are more of a distant acquaintance. Your friends, but you don't see them as often. You don't do as much with them. And they have far less of an impact on your life. And so I want to talk about your first tier. I want to talk about the friends in your first tier. And I want you to Maybe write their names down as you're taking notes. Who are they? Pick your best friend. Who is it? Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a sister or a brother. Maybe it's your mom. Maybe it's a coworker, high school buddy. I don't care who it is. I want you to think about them. I want you to write their name down because I'm going to ask you some questions about your friend. Number one, does your friend know God? Do they know God? Does your friend have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Here's why I'm asking you the question. Because if that friend that you have in that first tier knows God, and I mean knows Him, then they have a moral compass. They have a moral compass that is led by the Holy Spirit. And when you turn to that person and you're looking for direction and guidance and you're looking for help, they're not just going to jump on your bandwagon. Their moral compass is going to guide them in how they respond to you. And a really, really good friend who knows Jesus, they may push back on you. 
They may curve you. They may, ha they may literally grab you and turn you back and focus on your family and turn you to look and focus and invest back into the marriage. And what they're not going to do is say, oh yeah, come with me, bail out on that family, leave your spouse, hey, I'll help you, we'll go have a blast, let's go live life together, let's be single together. They're not going to be driven by that motivation. If they know God, and they're walking with Jesus, they're not only going to be your friend, but they're going to help you from making a really, really stupid decision. So does your friend know God? The second question that I have is, will they fight for your marriage? Will the friends in your first tier fight for your marriage? Is that their first inclination? Is that their first motivation? I can't tell you how many times couples come into our setting as we're providing marriage mentoring. And we have thousands of mentors all over trained on how to do this. And one of the first statements we make to any couple that comes into our home the very first night is we say this, we are here to fight for your marriage. We are here to fight for your family. That's why we're here. Make no mistake about it. And I can't tell you how many times someone will say to me, Matt, I've been seeing a counselor or a therapist. And they don't speak to me that way. And they don't tell me that they're fighting for my marriage. As a matter of fact, in many cases, they're helping me divorce. They're helping me divorce my spouse. They're helping me divorce the family unit. And I say back to them, yeah, I know. And I'm sorry. But that's not who we are. And that's not what we do. And that's not what we're going to do. And so if you're going to commit to this process, we're here to fight for your marriage. And I just want you to think right now about your first tier friends. Will they? Are they fighting for your marriage? If they are, hallelujah. You have no idea how wonderful and powerful and amazing and probably even anointed that that friendship is by God. The third question is are they character driven? Are they character driven? Do they know God? Are they fighting for your marriage? And are they character driven? Because that moral compass is gonna affect you in a great way. It's gonna encourage you, it's gonna help you, uh, they're gonna come around you and they're gonna lift you up when you need lifted up and they're gonna kinda push you when you need pushed and they're gonna pull you back when you need pulled back. Wow, that is a gift from the Lord. And we have thousands of mentors all over the world that are trained on how to be that kind of friend to you. And so as you're listening to this and you've got this first tier, second tier thing going on, and if the answer is the people in your first tier or the person in your first tier doesn't know God, they're not fighting for your marriage, and they're not really fully character driven, you have a problem you have a real issue. You have a, you've got a danger present that you may not even be aware of. And I'm going to ask you to do something that might be startling to you, and I don't want it to be offensive, but I'm going to ask you to navigate that friend out of the first tier. I'm going to ask you to navigate them into the second tier. They're still your friend. You still get to see them and hang out with them, but you're moving them far enough away from the nucleus of your soul and your heart that they're not influencing you. And then you're going to bring somebody into that first tier that knows Jesus. You're going to bring someone into that first tier that's going to fight for your marriage and your family and your children and all that God wants for you. And you might be thinking, okay, Matt, I get it. I, I, I think I agree, but this seems kind of scary. Where do I find a friend like that? Where do I find a friend who will fight for my marriage, uh, like you say, and where will I find someone? The answer is take a look around the room. Chances are everybody in the room right now that's going through this with you and this round the bases process, they want what you want. And I would almost guarantee you the fact that they're there, 
means that they know God or they want to know God. It means that they want to fight for your marriage and they want someone to fight for their marriage. And it means they're character driven. And so my encouragement to you is to find people like that to put in your first tier. Be strategic, be aggressive, be assertive. It's your life, it's your plan, it's your strategy. And at the end of the day, when you're 80 years old or 85 years old and you're looking in the mirror and you're looking back at your history, there's only one person to hold responsible for the outcome of your life, and that's you. And there's only one person that I can hold responsible for mine, and that's me. And so I pick my friends carefully. I pick them wisely. I have had to move some from the first tier to the second. I've had to do it at different times in my life. But the dividends have paid off amazingly. Now listen, if you're going to navigate a friend from the first tier to the second, don't call them. Don't call them up and broadcast it. Don't say, hey, Bob, yeah, this is Matt. I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to move you from the first tier to the second. All right, Bob? Yep, too bad. Sorry. Have a good day. <laughs> don't do that. You don't even have to tell them. You just slowly back away. You see them a little bit less. You don't reach out to them as much with your issues and your problems. You don't lean on them as much. And you replace that with someone that knows Jesus. And here's what will happen. Your life will get so healthy and it will become so powerful that when you now go into the friends in the second tier and you go to them and you go into their lives and you bring God with you and you bring all that's shining bright with you, now you can be a light into their darkness. And you're not there as long and you're not marrying their ways with your ways and you're in their life a little bit shorter but to bring the truth and to bring the gospel then you go back to your first tier and over time many of them might come to know Christ because of you. Hey listen I just want you to take this serious and guard yourself. As you round the bases in this segment I want you to talk about your friendships and what needs to change and who is good for you and who is bad for you. And, and here you are. Maybe you don't have a friend. Maybe you're a guy and you're like, I have nobody in that first tier. Well, that's dangerous as well. Because now you're limited to only leaning on yourself. And the Bible says that he who trusts himself is a fool. And I need godly people in my life like I need oxygen. And so I'm going to encourage you to get someone in that first tier. Sign up for a small group in your church. Get involved with other believers who are just like you, seeking, searching, and wanting to grow. Let's move on to hobbies. Develop hobbies that both enjoy. Hobbies. Hobbies are just things you enjoy. And I see a lot of times we have this divide where the wife does this all the time and the husband does that and it kind of pulls you away. And that's about as far as it goes. And so I want you to develop hobbies that you both enjoy. It's okay to have different hobbies. I think that's okay. But it's also fun to create hobbies, find hobbies that you both enjoy. Sometimes she brings me antiquing. And sometimes I bring her hunting with me. Yeah, I've done that. I got her all camoed up. And I take her hunting. She doesn't love it, but she likes being with me. And getting into each other's world actually is what stimulates romance. And so develop hobbies that you both enjoy. And number two, develop hobbies that stretch each other. Try different things. Try things you've never tried. Try things that only one of you like. And you just, it's fun and it's exciting. Sometimes you won't like it, but you'll like the experience. But the key is don't just sit around. Don't be lazy. Don't be relationally lazy. It's easy to do. Lastly, as we talk about family and in-laws, what I want you to do as you answer those questions is you might need to round the bases to create some boundaries with family and in-laws and to create some specifics as to how can you strengthen your marriage more and how can you define healthy relationships with extended family and in-laws. And as you round the bases, you may want to talk about some of that to protect your marriage more and invest in your marriage more and maybe move the in-laws and some of that out a little bit further so that your marriage can be stronger. 
All right, now I want you to go ahead and fill out the self-assessment and I want you to answer the statements just like before, agree or disagree, circle every statement where you didn't line up with the desired response found in the third column, and then you're gonna round the bases with the issues that you've circled and you're going to create a solution, you're gonna articulate it, you're gonna solve it together, you're gonna document that on the following page. And I wanna remind you to share one thing about your spouse that's positive. I want you to do that before you dive in and round the bases and then go ahead and begin. I also wanna draw your attention to homework. And I, what I want you to do on homework in this particular segment, and this is in the upcoming days or in the upcoming weeks, is I want you each to write down on a separate sheet of paper 10 different things that you would like to do on a date night. Be selfish. What are 10 things that if you could draft up the perfect date, what would they be? And this is where it's okay to be selfish. I mean, some of the things you're gonna pick, you may very well know your spouse won't like it, but do it anyway. And there are some things I want you to pick that are clearly things you both would like, but be a little bit selfish. When you're done, I want you both to exchange the list. You're gonna exchange the list. So you've got 10 dates that he selected, and he's gonna have 10 dates that you selected. And in the upcoming years, when you schedule a date night, which I would ask you to commit a minimum of one a month, ladies, you're gonna pick right off of his list. And you know you're hitting the target because he's given you the target. And guys, the next time it's your turn to set up the date night, and you pick right off of her list. And if you want to make it even more exciting, keep it a surprise till the last second. Surprise her with something on her list. Surprise him with something on his list. This is great homework. I have some more scriptures here if you'd like to read them. Have a great time on your little date, rounding the bases, and I look forward to seeing you in the next inning.